Bubba, why you got to pull so much? Can't we just walk at a nice friendly pace? Come on, Bugs. She wants to lead me everywhere. If only Bugsy was in charge of the top four race, we'd get there tomorrow. Okay, Bubba. Morning, morning, morning. It is Monday. It is the 2022 20, version of March the 12th or 13th, 13th. And it was the day after game day. You're here with me, Sean Butler, as we do episode six of Morning Walks. Not gonna be a long one, because it's raining. And I just wanna quickly talk about, you know, the disappointment of last night. You know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to explain how you feel after a game like yesterday, where you kind of feel like both teams were poor, neither team were particularly worthy of the win. The only difference in the game was the extraordinary performance of one man who is, you know, just, you have to look at that kind of performance and realize that there's only one or two people in the world that can put that kind of show on. You know, one of the goats, if not the goat. <sighs> but it's a six pointer, and so to walk away with nothing hurts. But what hurts even more is the fact that we didn't really show up, and neither did they. They didn't, right? They were awful. I've seen some of the player ratings being you know, banded about this morning. People saying that Paul Pogba played really well. Paul Pogba balled. I think he, uh, I think he was, he was all right. Certainly wasn't, you know, anything special. I thought Maguire was awful for them. I thought Doherty had all sorts of pleasure and wins against Tellez in the first half and for much of the second half. You know, Cavani came on and didn't do much. I think that Man United were a poor, a poor outfit, with the exception of Ronaldo. And Tottenham should have should have taken them to town. You know, and if it wasn't for Ronaldo, we would have easily won the game. And that being said, we were woeful in most of the positions. You know, I'm going to do my player ratings a little bit later on, probably on a separate video, but just quickly, like, you look at the three goals we conceded, two of them I don't think you can really blame Tottenham too much for. I mean, Lloris, the first goal was just an absolutely extraordinary strike from one of the best players that ever hit a football. You could possibly, if you wanted to be super critical, you could say that Lloris's positioning wasn't great. Like he was definitely, you know, on the on his wrong foot and was a little bit too too far to the left. You could you could make the argument, but you know that doesn't take away from the fact that he, the Ronaldo, just caught the ball with, you know, just I guess he hit it on the valve. It did look like it waved a little bit in the air. And maybe you could argue that Tottenham, some of the midfielders, Benton Core, or Hoiberg, or even Dyer, gave him too much space. So that's fair. But uh, the third goal, the header, it's not Doherty's fault that he can't jump as high as an NBA player. You know, and Cristiano Ronaldo did take that ball. And he's just got an incredible leap on him. Nobody in the Premiership can defend against him in the air when. Ronaldo can literally jump, jump two and a half feet off the, off the ground. And if he's, if he's heading the ball on the run at peak leap as well, you know, it looked bad on Doherty, but I don't think it really was. I, I mean, I just don't think anyone could have, could have got, could anyone on the Tottenham team could have reached that personally. I just, I just don't, so. Um, 
And then you look at the other second goal, Regalon was definitely at fault for, for, for uh, first of all, missing the offside, offside trap. And second of all, then when he did get beaten by it, he didn't try and run him back with any kind of pace. You know, he, uh, I guess he presumed it was offside, but he presumed wrong. I thought Regalon had a really, really bad game yesterday. Uh, I think a few players had. I think a few players had good games or okay games, um, but a few players had really bad games. Well, like I say, I'll do my player ratings later, guys. But you know, right now I just feel a little bit like dejected, frustrated, disappointed. You know, we, they were there for the taking. We kind of spoke about this on the walk yesterday. That uh, come on, bugs, just bring your ball. Come on. We spoke about this on the walk yesterday about how you know it was a it was a match made in heaven for Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, not only did he have his Tottenham record on his side, where he always scores, then he had a point to prove. And when you've got the best player in the world who's also got that kind of next level that he goes to when he's got some some points to make. And I guess I didn't speak about this yesterday, but forget because I forgot, but you know, when somebody that's in that ilk, like a Benzema, a similar sort of age, similar sort of end of his career, goes out and bangs a hat trick in the midweek, you know, that probably also gave Ronaldo a little bit more of a of a a reason to 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 tell the world exactly what he's about, you know. And um, fair play to the man, you know, he is just insane. Insanely talented, and uh, he was the difference. He was the only difference. You know, I don't think anybody else on the Manchester United team was anywhere near as good as him. I think the second best player on the pitch yesterday was Kulusevski. Um, really disappointed when Kulusevski got taken off for Lucas Moura. Listen, I know that sometimes people think of me as someone who criticises Conte. Uh, unnecessarily or, or you know overlooks the weaknesses in the squad I don't I just think that there is a reason why you're paying a, 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 a manager a lot of money the most money and that's decision making you know it's not just about motivation it's about decision making tactics strategy substitutions and there's this seems to be this idea that's been long felt at Tottenham under four or five different managers, six different managers probably, that you don't get to, you can't drop Sonny and you can't drop Kane. You can't substitute them. You know, you can't do the same with a few other players, but they are, whatever happens, however badly they're playing, that they must remain on the pitch because uh, they, they've always got that kind of game-changing moment in them. And I understand that philosophy, but yesterday Sonny was Shocking, in my opinion. Again, some of the player ratings that I've seen suggested that he was really good in the first half and faded as the game went on. I didn't see that. I was doing the watch along on the Irish Hotspur. I thought his, his first touch was poor. He slipped more than he didn't. I don't know what that was about. You know, Did Manchester United water the grass extra heavily and told all their players to wear a different set of studs? I don't know if they asked different sets of studs. I'm not... A footballer, so I don't know what the uh, how that whole kind of how that whole thing lies, but I didn't see a single Manchester United player slip, and I saw Regulon slip twice in the first half. I saw Sonny slip maybe four or five times throughout the game. Ben Davies slipped over two or three times as well. You know, it happened a lot in key moments, and so. Look, I mean that's the, that's the, the slipping is different to being to playing badly, but. St Sonny, Sonny didn't play well either way, but he slipped a lot as well. So I don't know what, what was that? Well, there, there must be something to that. Like why do three or four players slip over constantly and none of the opposition players do? Is there something to it? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not suggesting there's a conspiracy, but did Man United overwater the pitch? Did they over egg the pudding deliberately? Who knows? Who knows? Right now I'm just kind of sad, you know? Because I think the game was there for the taking, like I've said, and I think I feel like I feel like Tottenham could have and should have won that game. Ronaldo was world class. Kane was poor. I thought Kane was had an off day. I know he took his penalty well, but other than that, I thought he was pretty 
pretty wasteful. I'm actually going to turn around Bugsy, come back. We're not going down there, there's too many people. There's too many people out today, it's a Sunday. People, I like to do these walks solo. As much as I've done them, four or five times, I still don't like the looks I get when people, <laughs> people see me talking to a big black rod <laughs> in front of me. And uh, yeah, uh, the looks I get given. It's not, not good for your confidence, but anyway. Um, yeah, Harry Kane, I thought he was, he was quiet. Didn't get good service. Thought Benson, Benson Core was good. I thought Hoiberg played really well. You know, usually our our, uh, our weak spots are midfielders, and I thought that yesterday I thought Hoiberg was really good actually, and I thought Benton Core was really good. A couple of mistakes here and there. No one was perfect. I, you know, the most I'm going to give on my player ratings is a seven, seven and a half maybe, and that could only go to three places, the two midfielders and Kulu. The rest were sixes or fives or fours, you know. Um, super disappointed with for Regulon. He just doesn't, he didn't look, didn't look fresh at all, you know. Maybe we're gonna miss Sessignon more than we think, you know. Um, yeah, I thought Davies was sloppy. I thought Eric Dyer was sloppy. I thought Romero was sloppy. Uh, Bergwijn came on, didn't really get a chance to say to show his show his worth. Lucas Mora looked busy. I think Lucas Mora should have come on for Sunny. I do. Um, I feel like you have to. Look, Sunny hasn't been great. I know he scores a lot of goals. I know he's the top scorer. I know he's a superb player. He's world class in my mind. I genuinely do think he's world class. There's a whole debate that goes on in other channels about whether or not Sonny is world class and what does world class mean. In my mind, world class means the top five, maybe top, generally speaking, it would be the top five players in the world in that person's position. And specifically left ring forward for teams that play in that formation. I think Sonny's within the top five. In, a, in the world, but there's probably 10 players that are all kind of within a standard deviation of the norm and or a degree of standard deviation from the norm. And so it's, you could probably say there's 10 players that are world-class in that position. It's a very popular position and I definitely think he's up there, but I don't think that he should be unsubbable and I think that some players they, 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 if they have it in their mind that doesn't matter how badly they play, but you have to have that competitive element in my opinion, guys, you know? And if, if, if they're unsubbable, then what do they have to fear? Now, I love Sonny, I love him to pieces, but he hasn't been great this season. I know he scored some goals, but his performances haven't been great. And I think yesterday it was wrong to sub Kulu and it was, it was wrong to keep Sun on the pitch. Not, the, not saying that that would have changed the result, but, you know, that's how I feel about that. Anyway, moving on. So we lost the game. We lost the game. It could have gone either way. It sucks. It really sucks. It hurts. Wait, I'm not even looking. The camera's not even focused. Uh, it sucks today. It's a horrible, windy, miserable, damp, rainy Sunday in Surrey and I've got very little to be excited about I'm guessing you guys all feel the same let me know what you th your, your thoughts are right if you uh, do you agree should Sonny have stayed on the pitch do you think Kulu was the best player on the pitch should Kulu have stayed on and Mora played on the left no reason to think that, that Mora couldn't play on the left I know he usually plays central or on the right but there's no reason to think he couldn't play on the left. I mean, he did look busy when he came on. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried now about the, the left wing back spot, because Regulon didn't, Regulon didn't do anything, and Sessignon, you know, Sessignon was uh, just coming into his own. As I said yesterday, it sucks, man. The guy's got so much potential and talent. He's still got time on his side, but when you've got an injury that, it's the same injury every time. Bugsy! 
Come on, girl. Then, um, I don't know. I'd have to ask you this question as well. I'll ask you this now. Let me know in the comments. Would you keep, if you had to keep one of them, who would you keep, Reggie or Cess? The problems are with Regulon, you know that Real Madrid have always got the buyback clause. He's got a lot of talent, he's got a lot of pace, but he hasn't been, he's got, you know, his form flip-flops massively, and yesterday was another woeful performance from him, which I hoped wouldn't happen because he scored against Everton, and I thought maybe the reason why his form was flip-floppy was because his confidence wasn't there because he'd been missing a couple of sitters. But he scored against Everton, so I was hoping that that wouldn't be a problem, but... Um, but it looked like it was. So, I was going to look wait here for a while whilst my dog enjoys the last uh, couple of weeks of the cornfields before they get relayed by the local farmer. You're going to see this in, uh, what would it be? In the summer transfer window time when I'm doing these walks, you're going to see these like eight foot high corn plants or whatever they're called. Corn shoots, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think. Should we, if we had to sell one Regalon or Sessignon, if you keep Sess, you know you've got someone who's injury prone who can only play 15% of matches. And if you keep Regalon, you've got someone who A, has the buyback clause and C, uh, and B, is flip floppy and doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to pull it together. Do you keep both of them? Is it not a position you want to focus on right now? Is this summer window going to, you know, in reality, do we need like 10 plus players to rebuild this squad? And obviously you can't do them all in one summer. You could probably get six or seven, but not a whole, not a whole team's worth. So is left wing back a, a space that we have to trust in the medical team to get, to get Sessegnon, you know, fit and, and consistently fit? Uh... Or do you think that we need to look into that position as well? I know we've got to think about the right wing back spot. I know we have to look at left centre back. I know we definitely need someone who can be a goal scorer out of midfield. You know, I saw that stat today that the top three goal scorers this season for Tottenham is in all competitions is Sonny, Kane and then own goal. You know, We had nine own goals this season, which is mad. It's mad as a stat anyway, but it's even madder that, uh, that it's the third highest goal scorer like we need we need contributions from midfielders but I don't know if it's reasonable to expect too many goals from the midfielders we have Harry Winks if he was a decent enough player you'd expect to be a player that could contribute goals but he doesn't and he's not good enough anyway Hoiberg and Bentoncourt I don't know if it's right to expect too many goals from them we definitely need somebody else you know somebody who can play in a in the midfield who can bang them in a box to box and we don't really have that you know Hoiberg certainly isn't that and Benton course certainly not that so guys I don't know I've been talking for 18 minutes I'm going to wrap it up but uh, come on Bugsy let's go listen I don't think top four is over just yet I'm super super sad today I think that top six is more likely that's the obviously the kind of the more realistic battle but if you look at the run-ins, if you look at the, the, I've got a slide that I put up on a lot of my shows. If you look at the run-ins of the teams, Arsenal have got a hell of a tough uh, away, they've got seven away games left and they're seven teams, uh, they're probably seven of the hardest nine teams to go to away in the league. So I think Arsenal have got lots of potential to drop points, but it really, really hurts today. Because I don't think Ars I don't think United were better than us. I think we were poor, I think they were poor. It was one of those stupid fucking games where, you know, it could have been, could have gone either way. Everyone was shit apart from one man. And fair play to that guy, he is an absolute worldie. I'm gonna roll it off now, guys, because we're almost at 20 minutes and you probably won't even watch this long. Please like, share and subscribe if you haven't. If you enjoy these morning walks with me and Bugsy. Mama, where are you? Come say hi to the team. She's hiding. Um, all right, guys, like, share and subscribe. And you can expect my player ratings later. And we've got cool, we've got a couple of cool videos coming this week, some live streams as well with some familiar faces uh, as we get ready for the uh, the Bryson game. Love you all. 
Don't be too hard on ourselves. It's one of those games. It could have gone either way. It didn't go our way this time. It's not over yet. Keep the fight. As always, guys, as always, bye-bye.